Primary 6 Listening Comprehension Practice Listening Comprehension Practice for Primary 6 Instructions to Teachers Before you begin this practice listening exercise, please check that the volume of the speaker is audible to all your students. Adjust the volume of the speaker to ensure that all your students are comfortable with the level of volume. Instructions to Students In this practice listening exercise, you'll hear seven passages in total. You will hear each passage twice. In the question paper, you'll see the questions and three options for each question. Only one of the three options is the correct or the best answer. Choose the option which you think is the correct or best answer. Then put a tick in the box next to the option you have chosen as your answer. You will now hear 15 seconds of music before the exercise begins. Listen to passage 1, then answer questions 1 and 2. Good morning students and teachers. I'm happy to note that the three fire drills we carried out this year was smooth. We took 12 minutes and 30 seconds to assemble in the safe area in term 1. Last term, we took 10 minutes and 10 seconds and for the fire drill exercise this term, we took 7 minutes and 10 seconds. Let us give a round of applause for ourselves for the very good improvement. It is important to take the fire drill exercises seriously as these would train us to do what we should do in an emergency so that all of us will be safe. For the next two weeks, the flag raising ceremony will not be held in the school field. We will hold this ceremony in the basketball courts as some maintenance work will be done on the field. After the next two weeks, we will have to shift again to the school hall for the flag raising for another two weeks, after which we will be back on the field. Alright, I will now hand over to the discipline master. Thank you. Question 1. Which picture shows correctly the details about the most recent fire drill mentioned in the announcement? Question 2. Just before the students go back to the field after the maintenance work for the flag raising ceremony, where will the ceremony be held? Listen to passage 2, then answer questions 3 and 4. Hello, John. Where are you going? Hello, Ye Ping. I'm going to the school library. To attend the talk on food and health? It starts only at 2.30pm. Yes, but I want to get some information for my homework first. Yes, I have mine too. I need to get the book Natural Food for Health for my health science homework. I have to borrow a book titled Healthy Living. I have to read an article on the topic for my health education class two days from now. What's that book you're holding? The title is Nature, Food and Health. Hey, this might be useful for you. Yes, most certainly. Can I have it, please? It is due to be returned today. Come with me to the library. I'll return it, then you can borrow it. All right, thank you. You're welcome. What's your homework? Presentation or writing? I have to write an essay on the topic. 
Your task seems easy. All you need to do is to read the article. Yes. But my health education teacher is also my English teacher. So? So when I read, I have to be careful about how I pronounce the words. That's tough. All right. Let's get going. Yeah, let's go. Question 3. Which book did Ye Ping say she need for her homework? Question 4. What is John expected to do during his health education class? Listen to passage 3, then answer questions 5 and 6. It was a quiet Sunday morning. Alex was looking out of the window near the kitchen. Then Alex went to his study table, facing the window, to do his homework. His parents were out to the market, so he was all alone at home. While doing his work, a colourful butterfly that flew in through the window caught his attention. He stopped doing his work and watched with much interest the insect flying erratically round his house. The butterfly came through a window and flew near the sofa, then went past Alex's study table before it settled for a while on the dining table in the kitchen. Then it took off from the dining table flew out of the kitchen and settled on the wall behind the study table. It was there for a minute or two. Alex quickly took some photographs of the butterfly on the wall with his colourful wings spread. Then it took off suddenly, flew along an irregular path before it flew straight out of another window. Alex felt happy that he managed to take a few nice photographs of the beautiful butterfly. After watching the butterfly fly out of the window, he was at his desk again admiring the photographs he took. Question 5. In which location did the butterfly settle first? Question 6. Before starting to do his homework, Alex was at location... Listen to passage 4. Then, answer questions 7 and 8. Alright class, I think all of you have finished writing your essays. I'm now going to tell you about an activity we will carry out for the next few weeks in preparation for the oral examination next term. This activity will improve your speaking skills such as pronunciation, fluency and expressiveness. It will also help you to be more confident in speaking. You will all enjoy this activity which is simple, telling a joke to your classmates. I will give you an example now. Listen to this. A boy asks his father, Dad, are bugs good to eat? That's disgusting. Don't talk about things like that over dinner. The dad replies. After dinner, the father asks, now, son, what did you want to ask me? 
Oh, nothing. The boy says, "There was a bug in your soup, but now it's gone." Now, as homework, go and search for a nice joke that you like to share in class next week. Question seven: What activity will the teacher carry out in class in the next few weeks? Question eight. What was the reason for the boy to ask his father if bugs were good to eat? Listen to passage five, then answer questions nine. Ten, eleven, and twelve. Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to our program, Knowing Nature, on a beautiful fine Sunday. In our program last Monday, we talked about prawns, and then on the following Wednesday, we talked about squids. Now it is going to be about crabs. What is a crab? Crab. Is a creature of the sea with a flat, round body, covered by a shell, and it has five pairs of legs, and are referred to as decapods. The two front legs are known as claws or pinches, and they are not used for movement. Some crabs can swim by using their hind legs as paddles when in water. Have you seen a crab walking? Most animals walk forward, but a crab usually walks sideways. Have you ever wondered why? The reason crabs walk sideways is that their legs are attached to the side of their bodies. The joints bend towards the sides, and so they can only walk sideways. Do all crabs walk sideways? No, there are crabs that can walk forward or backward. Crabs eat both plant and animal matter, and so they are omnivores. They feed on algae, plankton, fungi, worms, mollusks, shrimp, and even other crabs. And now. An interesting fact about crab. The biggest crab in the world is the Japanese spider crab. It also has the longest leg span among the crabs, reaching up to three point eight meters. The Japanese spider crab can weigh up to nineteen kilograms. All right, boys and girls, I hope you now know a little more about crabs. In our next program, we will get to know about another marine creatures. Till then, goodbye. Question nine: The radio program on crabs was presented on a. Question ten: Which two creatures were featured in the previous two programs? Question eleven: The pincers of a crab are two front legs that are. Question twelve. Based on what you have heard, which of the following is correct?
Listen to passage 6. Then answer questions 13, 14, 15, and 16. Hello? Can I speak to Farida, please? Please hold on. I will call her. Hello, Farida. This is Harris. Who was speaking to me just now? That was my sister, Fatima. What's up, Harris? I want to ask you if you can help me with my English. I'm not very good at synthesis and transformation. You always talk of class in English. I wonder how you do it. Ha <laughs> ha. Sure, I can help you. There are ways to improve your language skills. Read widely and listen to good English. Writing and speaking skills are important too. What is it that you are not sure about for synthesis and transformation? Mary was cycling to school. She saw a dog. I wrote this answer. Mary saw a dog cycling to school, which I thought was a unique answer that would be different from the rest. But Miss Mala marked it wrong. Of course it is wrong. Remember what Miss Tan taught us last year? Not only our answers must be grammatically correct, but they must make sense. I thought my answer is sensible. I have seen dogs cycling in cartoons. Ha ha ha. Harris, those are cartoon dogs, not real dogs. Real life dogs do not cycle to school. Have you seen one in real life? No, I have not. It is good to give a unique answer, but it must be grammatically sound meaningful and sensible. My tuition teacher, Miss Rosilla, told me it is good to give answers that are different from what others would normally give. That will make us stand out. If you give an insensible answer, you will stand out, outside the class. <laughs> You're so funny, Farida. Thank you. I have got to go now. My mother is calling me. Bye, Farida. Bye, Harris. Question 13. A telephone conversation was very brief between... Question 14. Which one of the following was not, said the conversation? Question 15. Harris wanted to give an answer that is... Question 16. Presently, who is the English teacher for Farida and Harris? Listen to passage 7, then answer questions 17, 18, 19, and 20. A king was having a discussion with his ministers when an ant beat his feet. He picked up the ant and said, An ant, so tiny, can bite me and cause pain. He then looked at his ministers and asked, which creature is the most dangerous on earth? The ministers were dumbfounded for a while and then suggested all kinds of animals as being the most dangerous, from the minuscule mosquito to the enormous crocodile. But no one agreed on any one animal suggested to be the most dangerous. Then the king looked at Shankaran, a very well-respected scholar in the kingdom. He was wise, modest, and spoke only when necessary. The king asked him, Could we hear your thoughts, please? Shankaran replied, O king, 
humans, I think, are the most dangerous creatures of all. Wicked people and those good in talking sweetly with bad intentions are more dangerous than any animal. The ministers looked at one another. The king asked for further explanation. Shankaran said, A wicked person is dangerous as he will always be waiting for opportunities to cheat or harm others. Moreover, if you do good for him, he would do something bad. On the other hand, a person who is a sweet talker would always praise you insincerely. He will say very nice things to you. So one who flatters will not tell you the truth. Then a time will come when you will know the truth and be shocked by how you have been deceived. An animal is dangerous only when it bites a man. And a person bitten by an animal can be saved by treating him promptly. But a person who is the victim of wickedness or sweet talk may suffer for a long time. Question 17. What did the king ask his ministers? Question 18. The king looked at Shankaran finally because... Question 19. What could be the likely reason for the ministers to look at one another? Question 20. Based on what you have heard, which of the following statements is true? 